All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. And man, today we have some honestly very unfortunate news to talk about. It's another one of these YouTube kids channels that have just been caught in the worst possible way. I mean, I feel like anyone can kind of recognize that this is unfortunately a pattern that seems to unfold in a lot of these situations. But even then, like when you see the news about this, it just, it, it's fucking sad to think, right? That these kinds of situations happen to children, man. Like people who are genuinely defenseless, people who can't help themselves. And in this kind of case, people who look up to their parents and like rely on their parents to take care of them. And they can't even do that. They can't even rely on their parents to be the safe place for them or like be the people to take care of them. So today we're gonna be talking about the eight passengers situation situation, which is a YouTube channel that has gone completely just viral now. It's gotten mainstream attention, everything, after the mother of the eight passengers YouTube channel was arrested on aggravated child abuse charges. So, former family vlogger Ruby Frank of YouTube channel Eight Passengers has been arrested in Springville, Utah on aggravated child abuse charges, according to the Washington County Sheriff's Office. The uh, Frank was arrested yesterday at 9.33 p.m. along with business partner Jody Hildebrandt, who was co-founding Parent Advice and Counseling YouTube channel and service Konzions? Connections? Uh, I don't know, it's kind of a dumb name in my opinion, but both were charged with two counts of second-degree aggravated child abuse, intentional or unknowing. Frank garnered national attention in recent years when viewers of the now-deleted Eight Passengers YouTube channel, she ran along with her husband, Kevin Frank, began to speculate the couple were mistreating their six children. The family, who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, had nearly two and a half million subscribers at the channel's peak before it was removed from the platform. The Frank's eldest daughter, Sherry, had been somewhat vocal on social media about contact with her family in 2022, a fact that led to further rumors and theories to crop up online. After the arrest on Wednesday, she shared a photo to her Instagram story of a police car outside of a home with the caption, finally. So I'll be honest, I didn't really know about this channel before this entire situation happened. I've never heard any of the theories online that they were abusing their kids. This is just kind of one of those channels. It's in a niche that kind of falls outside of my knowledge of YouTube, right? I watch a lot of different types of content, but truthfully, I don't really like watching family content vloggers, things like that. And a lot of it is because of situations like this, right? Like I don't like watching family content because in so many instances, I feel like behind the scenes, the kids really don't get the lives that they need to have, right? Like in most instances, kids can't really handle that YouTube pressure, right? Like imagine being seven years old or something and when you come home from school, Every day, your parents are filming you for YouTube videos, right? And no matter what you do, you can't be not part of it, right? Because you're part of the brand, you know, you're part of the family. You, you kind of have to participate. And so there's these kids who they can't really escape this role ever. You know, they go to school and they're viewed as like celebrities by their peers. They go home and they're fodder for content, right? And I feel like in so many instances, the kids really get neglected in a way that really probably hinders them for the rest of their life. I mean, you look at like Disney stars and stuff like that and how they end up when they grow up. And man, it just, it, it seems like a very scary thought to have children being used for content like this, basically being farmed for videos. And then situations like this also unfolding in the background too, where unfortunately the kids are victims of legitimate abuse. So they were both charged, the, I guess, co-founder of Connections and the business, that's the business partner, and the mom. I don't really know what happened with the husband. Like, there's no mention that he was ever charged or arrested. I don't know how that kind of thing could have happened. I'm not saying that, you know, he's definitely guilty or whatever, but you would think that if he was in the house, he was aware of, like, the channel and was constantly around these kids and the mom, that he would, at some point, either be complicit in it or he, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know the situation. I, he wasn't charged. So I'm going to assume that they didn't have any evidence that he was involved. I, I really don't know. I don't know how that kind of works out in court. You know, I don't know how those kinds of charges really get laid out. It, it's a pretty screwed up situation altogether, right? Like this is ideally something you would never have to worry about. But apparently the eldest daughter, the oldest daughter, 
daughter, uh, Sherry, had been talking about, like, on social media, the whole family dynamic to some degree. Once again, I don't really know too much about this family or, like, their channel, anything like that, because I wasn't ever somebody who watched it or knew about them, but apparently people online had been somewhat speculating that this would be the case. I don't know what Sherry was saying online that actually got people kind of, like, worried that this would be the case, but it just, it's one of those things where, you know, with these kinds of family channels, it's so unfortunately not surprising when things like this turn out to be the case because you gotta think, these channels, I mean, this one, for instance, has like two and a half million subscribers, right? Now, I've done YouTube for a while, so I'm gonna assume they were pretty much always monetized, right? They were always getting ads on their videos and stuff. They probably got great CPMs because of the kind of content they were making. There was probably a lot of money on the line. There was probably a lot of revenue coming from a channel like this. And unfortunately for some people, man, money just corrupts you in the worst way. And in instances like this, it's very easy, it seems like, for shitty parents to see that money start coming in from a YouTube channel like this. They kind of start seeing that financial prospect where my kids and I can make a whole lot of money if we keep doing this, and it just turns them into the worst kind of person, right? They end up doing shit like this. I mean, it's just frankly disgusting, and that's once again why I've tried to stay away from channels of this type, so... Eight Passengers was a YouTube channel started in 2015 that documented the lives of mom and dad Ruby and Kevin Frank and their six children, Sherry, Chad, Abby, Julie, Russell, and Eve. At its peak, it boasted two and a half million subscribers and was known as one of the most famous or infamous family video channels. The channel was removed from YouTube earlier this year, while Kevin continued to post on a separate, less popular channel. While their content has attracted controversy for a number of years, the last three have been specifically damaging for the family as viewers began circulating petitions and reporting what they saw as evidence of child abuse and neglect to local authorities. Amongst some of the most infamous incidents were one in which Frank refused to bring food to school for her six-year-old daughter, who had forgotten to pack her own lunch, and another in which one of their sons said he was being forced to sleep on a beanbag after playing pranks on his brothers. Uh, in another, she took Christmas away from one of the young children as punishment for being selfish. In many instances, she could be seen threatening to withhold food or otherwise punishing her children in a way viewers found to be too severe. Eight Passengers has been cited by activists as just one of many examples of family vlogging channels that have left children unprotected and easily exploitable. In response, Illinois recently passed a law meant to specifically introduce protections for minors appearing on their parents' monetized social media. Okay, so I'm actually kind of intrigued on this law because I've never really heard of anything like this. So that's actually kind of good. That, that's kind of cool in my opinion. That's actually a Illinois W because like I said, in a lot of these instances, these kids really don't have any protection. You know, the parent, once again, they get blinded by the revenue, the money, the notoriety, whatever that comes along with it. And I feel like it really detaches them from their parental role if they were even attached to it in the first place. I mean, obviously it still takes a pretty bad level of fucked up for somebody to do this that was there before the money but that money I feel like really aggravates that problem so I, I gotta say obviously uh threatening to withhold food from your kids uh kind of wild you know kind of kind of a shitty experience I mean food is like an inherent human need it's not like a fucking xbox right like if your kid doesn't get good grades at school you know you could be like yeah you can't play fortnite for the next month until you get your grades up and you actually start doing better you know that, that's not really that abusive that's not bad right because you're punishing them with something that's not a necessity you're making them learn consequences to their actions but being like yeah fuck you no lasagna for dinner tonight if you i guess act out or whatever right or like for instance taking their bed away from them and making them sleep in a bean bag as if there's some sort of like fucking dog or something i that's a little wild to me bro I, I just i don't see how that's supposed to help your kid like your kid what lesson are they supposed to learn like okay well if i don't do what my parent says i don't get to eat dinner and I get to be hungry, right? Like, I, I get to be malnourished. Congratulations. You're, you're teaching your kid a great lesson. That person that I'm supposed to feel comfort and, like, safeness in is actually some sort of prison guard that can deprive me of basic human needs at any time. Like, what the fuck kind of lesson are you really teaching, right? And so, now child abuse charges are actually filed. This is no longer just some, like, internet conspiracy where people are kind of, like, bringing up some little 
pieces of videos or like background or whatever that they notice that is an issue to them, right? This is like the police have come, the county has charged them, they will face trial or a judge or whatever, right? I don't know if they're going to get a grand jury or how this is going to work, but this is pretty fucking serious. And this channel has been deleted. Uh, apparently Frank, which is the dad who wasn't charged, or the mom were still uploading to a different channel after the previous one had been deleted by YouTube. So, I mean, even YouTube stepped in at a certain point, right? And that's what really surprises me that I didn't hear about this because usually I feel like when a channel gets taken down, especially for a pretty fucked up reason, pretty typically that gets coverage in the media. A lot of people end up talking about it because in instances like this, perfect example, YouTube really takes these kinds of channels down over some pretty severe big issues, right? Like the EDP 445 instance, for example, for example, right? Like this was a guy who was trying to meet with a kid for sexual purposes and he lost his YouTube channel because of that. And obviously I agree with that. I think that's a good thing. But that's the thing, like when you hear these kinds of, you know, situations where YouTube takes a channel down, I feel like I usually hear about it because it's pretty significant. I didn't hear about this one, so it kind of unfortunately reminds me of like the Daddy05 scenario, right? Where this was a family uploading content to YouTube, you know, people were watching them because of the family environment or whatever, and there were the kids in the videos too. And they were doing some pretty fucked up pranks and like pretty messed up skits and whatnot with them and like really upsetting them for content. Just like emotionally fucking with these children for like YouTube views basically. And of course the parents ended up getting a complete like nuke dropped on their head. Uh, YouTube doesn't allow them anymore. I'm pretty sure they got charged if I remember correctly. It's, it's just these kinds of scenarios are just so screwed up to see. And it really makes you think that like there's really not the same reason to do YouTube for everybody, right? Like for me, I started YouTube as a kid because I enjoyed making videos and like I wanted to, you know, make content like a lot of my favorite creators. For these like parents, they view YouTube as purely a revenue option and a platform to boost their like, I guess clout, you know, they don't care about making content. They don't care about the fact that they have a family. They don't care about these things. They just get so wrapped up in the numbers and whatnot. And children end up being the victims. That's what's so fucked up. Like these kids have been abused. You know, there's probably some sort of trauma. I don't, I don't want to pretend I'm some sort of like therapist or something, but in reality, they're probably pretty traumatized from the situation that they've been in. I mean, even one of the children who, from my understanding, was no longer in the house and was posting on social media was pretty vocal about the situation going on, was pretty open about a lot of this, it seems, and talked about it. So, I mean, it just, it really makes you think, man, like, in I don't want to point at every family channel and be like, oh, they're all doing this, but I would say there's a lot more than people are aware of that this is kind of happening with. When you see these kinds of channels and these kinds of situations happen, there's always going to be people trying to do this shit. That's just what's so fucked up about it, man. And, and that's why I think people have to be cautious about this. What kind of channels are you really watching? Because, I mean, you're, you're watching these people thinking that it's some sort of, like, family-friendly content, something wholesome or whatever, and, and then there's child abuse in the background that you don't know about, right? So, with that being said, thank you all for watching though if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel follow me over on twitter and twitch at sub to optimus make sure to check out shoptimus down below thank you to my watch optimus subscribers your support helps the channel tremendously and until my next video guys this is optimus well talking about the eight passengers channel and signing out